Hello and welcome back. We are ready to begin our look at chapter two, uh, which is biochemistry. Um, we're going to be spending the next couple weeks on this topic. Uh, this is the first of nine videos. So I've, I've taken this uh, chapter, biochemistry, and I've broken it up into nine different videos. Um, some of the videos are going to be 20-25 minutes, some of the videos might be as long as 40-45 minutes, um, but nine videos that you're going to be uh, engaging with over the next couple of weeks. And so uh, this is a critical chapter in our understanding of how the body functions. Uh, this is a critical chapter in understanding how uh, physiology works. All right. The entire concept of physiology, what is happening at the cellular level, is predicated on understanding biochemistry. And so this is one of the reasons why uh, I spend so much time on this, because this is the foundation to being able to understand what is happening in homeostasis. And so with that said, uh, let's go ahead and jump into looking at uh, an introduction into chemistry. Right? Not all of you may have uh, had Chem 1 or Intro to Chem. And so if we're going to talk about chemistry, uh, we need to understand something about it. We need to understand what is an atom. We need to understand what are molecules and how can we create those molecules. And so the first couple of videos is going to be looking at just that. Um, so uh, part one of what we're going to be exploring uh, is going to be predicated over here uh, in the basic chemistry part of it. We're not going to go through all of these, but we're going to be hitting on uh, quite a few of these key topics. And then uh, once we start transitioning uh, into how this applies to the body, we're going to be moving over here. And the bulk of our conversations, once we move to this slide, or this part of the slide, is going to be, what is a carbohydrate? What are lipids? What are proteins? Right? And what are these things called nucleic acids? Um, and so uh, we will explore biochemistry and the implications of basic chemistry as it pertains to carbohydrates, nucleic acids, proteins, and lipids. Uh, and so, uh, as I have said in the past, trust the process and um, you will find success if you trust in the process. Uh, it's not going to make sense as you're going through it, but it will make sense once you come out of it. Um, so with that said, let's start with some of the basics. This is an atom. Right? This is an atom. Now, specifically, this is what we define as being a helium atom. Right? And so this is a individual atom of helium. And we know this is helium because of some basic characteristics. First thing, uh, all atoms, all atoms have two basic components to it. It has what we define as being a nucleus. And inside of that nucleus, we find two things. We find protons, which have a positive charge and we find neutrons, which have a neutral charge. All right, so they don't really, they don't have a charge. All right. So that's part one of all atoms. And then we have, then we have a second aspect to all atoms. And that is this outer edge right here, which we call the electron cloud. And it's within the electron cloud where these guys are found. And those guys are the electrons. So all atoms are broken up into these two distinct regions, the nucleus, and it's within the nucleus where we find protons and neutrons. And the, and the electron cloud, which is where we find electrons. Um, just as a side note, right, just as a side note, 
um, electrons, right? if an atom is to gain or lose an electron, right? so in other words, these guys are uh, interchangeable. Right? Uh, atoms can trade their electrons. Right? They can give some away. They can also take some from others. Um, and so these are tradable. Right? Electrons are tradable. And we're going to talk about some of the implications of being tradable here in a few minutes. But if an atom trades its electrons, you no longer have a atom, which tends to be balanced, but instead you create an ion. And so we need to explore a little bit about what is an ion. All right, so an ion is any atom that has gained or lost electrons. Right, an atom, I'm sorry, an ion is any atom that has gained or lost electrons. Right. Protons. Right. An atom that gains or loses a proton, an atom that gains or loses a proton becomes a different atom. Right. It becomes a different atom. So if helium which has two protons, gains a proton. It's no longer helium, it's lithium. If helium loses a proton, it's no longer got two protons, it has one proton, it becomes hydrogen. And so your proton defines the atom in which you are looking at every atom, right? every element has a specific number of protons. And again, if you change that number of proton, you change the atom that you're dealing with. And then we've got neutrons. Now, if you gain or lose a neutron, if you gain or lose a neutron, what you end up then having are isotopes, right? isotopes. Um, and so any atom that will gain or lose electrons uh, becomes an isotope. Uh, if you are looking at pursuing any kind of um, uh, physics base or, or nuclear medicine, all right, where you're dealing with maybe radiation or other forms of nuclear radi of nuclear medicine, you're going to be dealing with isotopes. All right, that is that is what you're going to be dealing with. But the body by itself, we don't really look at isotopes. All right? uh, they don't play much of a role in maintaining homeostasis. All right, protons we don't spend much time talking about because again, if you change a proton, you change the atom. Um, but, but we do spend an awful lot of time talking about this. All right. If we change, if we change the number of electrons, we change the chemical property of the atom. We change its chemical property by changing its ability to react. A term that I refer to, and you're going to hear me say this numerous times, reactivity. You change or alter the reactivity of any atom when you change the electrons, and that will alter the physiology. That will alter the physiology. In fact, in fact, homeostasis in general is based on electron interaction or electron reactivity. When we talk about chemical bonding, what we're referring to is how are the electrons in the atoms involved in bonding reacting with one another. 
And so we need to pay attention to, we need to pay attention to what's happening within the electrons. Protons, we don't care too much about. Neutrons, we care even less about. But the electrons are where we're going to be focused. And so we need to have a really good understanding of electron reactivity. All right. Um, before we before we get there, right, I want to talk a little bit more about um, the arrangement and the anatomy, quote unquote, of an atom. Right? What makes an element an element? And so here you can see in front of you three examples of elements. Right? In the first one, you have an atom of hydrogen. Right? What's the characteristic of that atom? Well, it's got one proton. It's got zero neutrons in the nucleus, and it has one electron in its orbit. Right? Next to that, if you add one proton, you now have helium. And helium actually has two protons, two neutrons, and you can see it also has two electrons. Right. If we add a third proton, to that nucleus, you no longer have helium, you have lithium, as I mentioned earlier. And lithium has three protons, has four neutrons, but it also has three electrons. And look at that, look at those three electrons. Right? That is not by mistake. You've got two electrons on the first little orbit surrounding the nucleus, and then you've got a lonely third electron that's been placed into a new orbit. We're going to talk more about that. We're going to talk more about that in a few and why that is. Um, there is a very specific reason for that. Um, and uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll introduce it now. Um, it's going to come into play more so in the second video, but I'll, I'll introduce that now. Um, when we look at electron placement, when we look at electron placement, the first energy shell surrounding the nucleus, that first energy shell can hold up to two electrons. And so here you've got one electron. Right. Technically, hydrogen can hold one more electron, because that shell can hold two. This is the first energy shell. All right. Helium has two electrons on its first energy shell. We consider that shell to now be full. Can't hold any more electrons. And so what happens? Well, when you get to things like lithium that has three energy shells, two go on the first shell and then you create a second shell. The second energy shell can hold up to eight electrons. Now for simplicity's sake all right. We don't really go past three energy shells. And we're going to say that the third energy shell can also hold up to eight electrons. Now, if you've had um, Chem 1025 um, or if you've had uh, Intro to Chem, tem, uh, Chem 1045C, you know that these energy shells have... Uh, p orbitals and q orbitals and s orbitals. We're not going to go into that. Don't don't worry about that. The key here is the first energy shell can hold up to two electrons. Past that two electrons, as we see with lithium, we have to go to a second energy shell. All right. Um, and then once that is full, once it has eight electrons, then we go to a third energy shell, and that energy shell can also hold eight electrons. The electrons on the outermost orbit or shell, all right? electrons 
on the outer most shell or orbit are called valence electrons. The importance of valence electrons is this is where chemical bonding happens. And so chemical bonding takes place with the electrons in the outermost shell what we refer to as the valence electrons. The other thing to keep in mind here is that these electrons are not static. In other words, the two electrons in the first shell are not always in the first shell. The eight electrons in the second shell are not always in the second shell. The eight electrons in the third shell are not always in the third shell. Opposites attract. We know that there is an attraction between these electrons surrounding the nucleus and the protons in the nucleus. Electrons have a negative charge, protons have a positive charge. The electrons are drawn to the nucleus. And so what happens is, what happens is, these electrons that are closest to the nucleus get energized from the attraction. And as they get energized, they get enough energy to move away from the nucleus. And so they spread themselves out to other potential orbits. But as they move further away from the nucleus, they lose energy. And when they lose that energy, they get sucked back into the positive nucleus. And then they gain energy when they get close to that nucleus again and they pull away and they float out to the outer shells where they again lose the energy and then they get sucked back in. So these electrons are constantly moving from orbit to orbit, from shell to shell, which is why we call it a cloud. Because they kind of gain energy and move away and lose energy and come back closer to the nucleus. So that is something to consider here. The other thing to consider here, the other burning question that you should be asking is, how do we know how many protons and neutrons are present in an atom? And to do that, we've got this thing called a periodic table. And the periodic table is all of the elements that we currently know and have identified with some basic information. Right, with some basic information. So uh, in the center of each of these boxes, there's um, a symbol. It's either one letter or two letters all right, in length. This is the chemical symbol for the element. So Si is silicone. H is hydrogen. He is helium. Li is lithium. Be is beryllium. B is boron, C is carbon, N is nitrogen, so on and so forth. All right? Sodium is Na. Huh? Why Na? Well, because it goes back to the Greek term for sodium, which is nallium. All right? Nallium. Um, and so it comes, becomes Na. All right? um, we also see that with... Um, hold on one second. Uh, not magnesium. Crap. Oh, potassium. All right. Potassium is K, not P. All right. Well, it's K because of the Greek term for potassium is kallium. All right. Kallium. So you have nallium and kallium. All right. So it goes back to the Greek terminology for those things. All right. So all of these boxes have a chemical symbol that denotes the chemical name. All right. In the, in this case here, in the upper left-hand corner, you see this very large whole number, right? large print whole number. That large print whole number is what we call the atomic number. And what you need to, what you need to understand about that is the atomic number equals 
the number of protons. The atomic number equals the number of protons. And in a neutral atom, in a neutral atom, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. So for silicone, its atomic number is 14, which means it's got 14 protons. We can expect, absent of any chemical bonding, that because there are 14 protons, there are also 14 electrons. All right. The other number that you need to keep track of is the atomic weight. Now, the atomic weight is typically a decimal point. Right? The atomic weight is typically a decimal point. And so for uh, silicone, it is 28.09. That's the atomic weight. We round that to 28. Well, that atomic weight is important because when you take the atomic weight or the atomic mass, as you will see sometimes it referred to, and subtract the atomic number, you equal the number of neutrons. So for silicon, right, for silicon, we have 28 as the atomic mass minus 14, which is the atomic number, which means there are 14 neutrons present. There are 14 neutrons that are present. Pay attention to this far column over here. Helium, neon, argon, um, krypton, xenon, radon. Right? These are what we define as being the noble gases. Right? These noble gases, the reason why they are noble, or the reason why we refer to them as noble, is their valence electrons are full. And when the valence electrons are full, the atom cannot react. It has zero reactivity. It can't engage in chemical bonding. The goal of all of these atoms, the goal of all of these elements, is to have their valence electrons full. Hydrogen wants desperately to have two electrons in its outer shell, so it can be full. Lithium wants desperately to either have eight electrons in its outer shell or get rid of that one and drop back down to having only two. Beryllium has two electrons in its outer shell. It's got four altogether, two on the first, two on the second. It desperately wants to have a full, stable outer shell. And so it very typically gives away two electrons. Here, take them. Don't need them. Why? Because that drops it back down to only having two electrons, and that's stable. That is full. And so those noble gases are what all other atoms aspire to be. All other atoms want to be noble gases because their valence electrons are full. Their outer shells cannot hold any more. So they don't need to depend on anybody else. And because of that, they are not reactive. Uh, and so on this slide here, we, we take this and I blow this up a little bit for you so you can see it easier. You can see this a little bit easier here. I'm going to change color. Let's do blue. All right. So real quick, let's, let's just kind of play some scenarios here. I'm going to write atomic number. Um, atomic mass and electron number. All right, so um, for lithium, all right, the atomic number is three. All right, and so that means that there are three protons. How many electrons? There are three as well. Why? Because 
the electron number matches the atomic number. What is the atomic mass and the resulting neutron number for lithium? Correct. The atomic mass is 6.94 for lithium, which we round to 7. All right. And if we subtract, remember, atomic mass minus atomic number equals number of neutrons. And so if we do that, then... Uh, lithium has four neutrons because uh, seven minus three equals four. Right? Seven minus three equals four. You can do the same thing for beryllium. Beryllium has an atomic number of four, which means there are four protons and four electrons. All right, four proton or four protons, four electrons. Its atomic mass is 9.0. Right, 9.0. And so when you subtract 9 minus 4, you get 5. And so there are 5 neutrons in beryllium. This is lithium. All right. If you look at sodium, Sodium has an atomic number of 11, all right, which means it also has 11 electrons. And if you map that out, two electrons on the first shell, eight electrons on the second shell, that equals 10, but remember there's 11, so we've got to have a third shell for its one, all right? Um, so just kind of keep that in mind, all right? The atomic mass is uh, 22.99, which equals 23, all right? And so once again, uh, 23 as the atomic mass minus the atomic number, which is 11, equals 12. And so there are 12 neutrons in sodium. So you can see the repetition here. Check out carbon. Carbon, which has its proton, its atomic number is six, which means there's six electrons. And if there's six electrons, that means the first shell has two electrons. Second shell has four electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. That equals six. All right, atomic number is the number of protons, which equals the number of electrons. Its atomic mass is 12. 12 minus 6 equals 6, and so therefore carbon has 6 neutrons. All right. And so we can see, by the way, remember that these in sodium, that guy right there is the valence electron. Right. In carbon, so there's only one valence electron in sodium, but in carbon there are four valence electrons. Right. And this is going to come into play when we look at the second video. And something just to kind of get you thinking a little bit, um, these are the percents of the top six atoms that we have within our body. Right? So 65% of your body weight is oxygen. 18% of your body weight is carbon. 10% uh, of your body weight is made up of hydrogen. 3% of your body weight is made up of nitrogen. 1.5% or so is calcium and about 1% is phosphorus. And then there's a whole lot of other things that make up that other 1.5%. But here's, here's the ironic thing, and I'm going to leave you with a little bit of humility today. Right? If you were to sell these elements 
out on the black market based off of body weight. Your body would be worth about $7.40. Let that sink in and I'll catch you on the flip side.